guys, I, I don't know where to begin. Um, Toot's gone. Um, they're just, they're gone. Uh, I, I don't know when I'm going to see them again. Um, the, the Stardew Valley 1.6 update dropped this morning and they're gone. So what, what can I do? Clearly my only option is to make an emotional support void chicken. So the emotional support chicken is a pattern that has gone completely viral over the last little bit. It's from the Knitting Tree, Los Angeles. Um, it's a paid pattern. You can find it on Ravelry or through the Knitting Tree. And it creates this absolutely adorable, quite large stuffed chicken. Um, I am going to be doing mine as a void chicken from Stardew. So this here is the uh, inspiration. I went into my stash. Um, my first thought was actually to do one of the blue chickens from Stardew, but I actually don't have that much blue yarn in stash. And I really wanted to start it right away because, uh, like I said, the Stardew Valley 1.6 update, which is a huge content update for Stardew Valley, dropped uh, early this morning, or actually late this afternoon. Late this morning, early this afternoon. It dropped around 1 p.m., which uh, was just brutal waiting for that. Um, but it seems like the perfect time to make myself my very own void chicken. So I went diving into stash. For the main color, I'm going to be using this. It is uh, Lion Brand Heartland in the colorway Great Smoky Mountain. It's this beautiful kind of heathered gray, which I think will look really great. Uh, and then I paired that with... Uh, loops and threads impeccable in just solid black that's going to be the contrast color and then I grab some red for the comb and the eyes possibly I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the eyes yet they are supposed to be bright red I don't know if I'm going to sew them on if I'm going to do buttons or if I'm going to paint some safety eyes I'm not sure yet um, and then I haven't grabbed yarn for the beak yet I'm not quite sure um the void chicken beak is kind of like this peachy tan color um and i just i'm not sure so we're gonna cross that bridge when we come to it but in the meantime we are making our emotional support void chicken and i am going to try and only work on this while toot is playing stardew valley so uh while she's playing, I will pull out this project. When she's done playing, taking a break, I will put this project away and work on something else. I know it's only the next day, but I did not realize how fast and fun this project would be. Uh, so this is how far I've gotten. And it is the chicken butt, basically. Um, so the chicken will be folded in half, like such, and sewn up along these feathers. And then I will continue knitting along the body here. So you can see that it's going to be quite a large chicken. Um, I am very excited. And the fabric that I'm getting, sorry for the clicking of the needles there. The fabric I'm getting is just a wonderful, soft, squishy texture because it is garter stitch. It's this soft acrylic. The needles are slightly too small for the yarn. Um, if I was to make a sweater or something out of this, I'd probably be using a few sizes up but because it is garter stitch it's just giving me this lovely squishy texture that is going to be perfect for a stuffy um so let's see next time toot fires up the game we're right back at it
So we have reached the point on the chicken where I have finished all of the knitting for the body and I've finished the knitting for the head, but I now need to choose a yarn color for the beak before I can continue knitting. And you would think, you know, it's a beak, orange or yellow would be a pretty safe bet, but the void chicken is a little bit different. And the beak, it depends on which piece of art you're looking at, but it's kind of this like, sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's like an earth tone, sometimes it's like a peach color. So I'm really not sure, which means um, I think it's time to call in the Stardew expert. Yes, I, I did. I, I'm sorry, uh, but I, I really need your help on this one. Uh, can you just tell me which one of these yarns that I should use for the beak of the void chicken? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you go back to the valley. I will see you later. Love you. Bye. Okay. So now that we figured out the beak situation, thank you Toot, for that again. Um, I have to figure out the eyes. So I've got three options here. Option one, embroider it on with the red yarn, just straight up embroidery. I don't really want to go for that because I'm not the neatest embroiderer. Um, the option two and three are here. Um, we have these large round, they are buttons, but they're meant to be like eye shaped buttons. Um, and then I have a wooden button. So, and then a red paint pen. So if I go with one of these two options, I'll paint them red first. Um, in terms of size, so this is the head. In terms of size, they're about the same size. I'm really not sure. Um, I think this button will give it more of that um, like homespun rustic -y style. And this button is gonna be a little bit more ominous. So I think I'm gonna go with this guy. So uh, I'm gonna paint a couple of these red and see how it turns out. So attempt number one with the red paint pen, this one did not go as planned. So I pulled out some white paint and I just gave the eyes, this is just um, acrylic craft paint. 
I just gave each eye a double coat that's dried. And now I'm going to take a red Sharpie and just see if I can color this in red. Oh no. Okay, I, I have to be very, very light or else the Sharpie takes the paint off. I don't know if this is gonna work. I like the color, but there's like black flecks in it. I might paint a couple of buttons and then see which one I like better. The wooden buttons and just do the Sharpie directly on the wood. So you can see that's what it looks like after one coat. Yeah, you can still kind of see the white and then the white is flaking off and showing the black through. But I feel like the red eyes are a really important part of the void chicken, so I really want them to be red. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. So the other option is taking this wooden button and just applying the red Sharpie directly to the wooden button. Okay, yeah. So this is my attempt with the black button white paint sharpie combo and i've kind of got this scratchy light pink situation and then i've got a bright red button here so i think i'm gonna go with the buttons so let me just do a second button these are just plain wooden buttons from the dollar store uh, i bought them in a big pack they come in multiple sizes they're uh they're pretty handy for when you just need basically a button base. Um, I don't know if I'd use them just on their own as they are, but when you need something to paint or add stuff to, I'm getting so much red Sharpie on my hands. That's okay. So there we have two red eyes. Perfect.
the boy is finished. Here he is, the emotional support boy chicken in all of his chunky glory. I love the finish size of these. This is completely two pattern spec. It's on gauge, everything. This is how big it's supposed to be. It's just, it's the perfect size for hugging. Like your, your, your head just, it tucks in just like that. And then you give it a little squish. And then you feel better. So this, this was such a fun project. Um, it really, it worked up really, really quickly. Um, it did not take me as long to finish the chicken as it took to, to reach perfection in her newest Stardew file. Uh, I just was working on other stuff at the time. So yeah, this is the boy. <laughs> um, I love the texture that the soft acrylic yarn makes with the garter stitch. It's really soft and squashy. The shaping of the short rows made it easier to stuff to the right kind of like dimension and shape. Um, I always have an issue, and I've spoken about this before, when it comes to making stuffed animals, um, I find that in the, the final few steps where you're doing things like placing the eyes, making sure the beak is straight, sewing the comb on, um, there's a fine line between cur cute and cursed. And I usually end up on the cursed side. Um, for the void chicken, there isn't a ton of places to go wrong, and it is a void chicken, so even if he does go a little bit wrong, it's okay. Um, but yeah, I love him. There isn't much I can say about this pattern other than it is super fun, super addictive, and if you make one, you will immediately want to make a thousand more because they work up really quick, really easily, and, uh, they're just, like I said, they're kind of the perfect size to hold. Um, I didn't stuff mine too firmly, so it's just, it's lovely, squashy, soft. I love him. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. I'm a bit of a weird one. So I, uh, I hope you liked it. And I hope that if you make your own emotional support chicken, void or not, that you uh, share it with me in the Discord server or on Instagram, or even just link it in the comments. I would love to see them. I think that we should grow an army of these boys, and I believe that we as a knitting community are well on the way. Uh, so until next time, my friends, I will see you in the Discord. I'll see you on Twitch. And as always, I will see you in my heart. All right. Bye, guys. So the emotional support uh, void chicken, which you can see here, uh, it's a pattern by the Knitting Tree Los Angeles. And no, we're not doing that bit. Okay. <laughs> Back to the void chicken.